Well, Razorback fans, that was a weird game. So let's talk about it on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I'm also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7 The Buzz.com. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more right now with new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Hope everybody had a wonderful uh, weekend as uh, we're going to try to do our best to recap what was a very strange game for the Arkansas Razorbacks that still resulted in a win. No question about it. You can never be upset with a win. You can be concerned. You can be a little uneasy. You could be worried about what could or could not be for the rest of the season, but you can't be mad. And I'm not mad. And uh, I think that a lot of Razorback fans may have been mad, you know, watching the game itself. But, uh, you know, considering where Arkansas was, where they were losing games like this, and we'll talk about what uh, some of the other teams in college football, especially in the SEC, went through. But you can't really be too overly upset. But still, at the end of the day, Arkansas wins 28-6. to I was expecting a blowout. And in fact, if you listen to or watch the podcast, Last week, I felt like it was going to be just blowout city for the Razorbacks. Like, no problems at all. Just go out there and take care of business and get out of there with some backups coming. And unfortunately for the Razorbacks, that did not happen. Um, let's just kind of go through exactly what was going on in the game and, and honestly, the, the biggest problem I have. Like, the biggest problem without, to me, question is the rushing attack. The offensive line was not very good. And that is what the concerning thing is for me right now, and I know for many others. You never want to be in a situation to where you have your offensive line not being able to dominate the point of attack when it comes to a team like Kent State. Now, give Kent State credit. They played well, or at least better than what we saw from last week. But Arkansas still needs to be better on the offensive line than what we saw, especially in the rushing thing. Like Arkansas only finished with 308 total yards in this game. I know that that's like, you know, whatever, but it was like, that's, I don't even think that's a good indication of how much the offense to me struggled in this game. It, it, they got better as the game went on. In the second half, they came alive a little bit more. But when you had a halftime score of 14 to 6, and one of those touchdowns being a pick six, that, like, that's just not what you need to have happen. You still had KJ, you still had AJ Green, you still had Rashad Debinion, you had Dominic Johnson, you had Armstrong, you had Tesla, you had Taz, you had all these players on offense that was, you know, out there and healthy. We know Rocket wasn't. But there was just so many times where the, the running game just, whether it was the running backs not hitting the holes that they were supposed to be hitting, whether it was the offensive line not getting any sort of push or any sort of uh, hole opening, like there, there was various things and various reasons why. Uh, the running attack wasn't very good, but I think that after seeing it in game one and how meh it was, and now seeing it in game two, it's starting to become more like, okay, was it just a bad game? Or is this actually a legitimate concern that Arkansas is going to have to deal with for the rest of the season? I'm not to that point just yet. I am getting there, though. I am very much getting there. And I think that there's a lot of reasons still to be optimistic to still think that this is going to be a good year and to think that they can still fix it and get it turned around. But, but there's no doubt that if you're going to be a successful team in the SEC, you have to be able to run the ball effectively and you have to be able to count on your offensive line. And I think that that's why it's such the weirdest thing is because with Sam Pittman, if there was ever one guarantee I felt like I could make or you could make or any of us could make, he was first hired as head coach. He was like, well, you know the offensive line's always going to be good because he is the best offensive line coach in the country. Has been for a long time. He's great in recruiting. He's great at developing. A lot of kids got drafted uh, in, into the NFL from under him. Like, it was just, it, it made total sense. And so when he's got an offensive line that's struggling, it's weird. Because to be honest, that's really the only thing about 
this team that has really been struggling. Again, offensive line, you can mix that in with the running backs because it's not only the offensive line. It's not. But when, when those things start adding up and you start seeing it now in back-to-back -back games, you're like, okay, how does this make sense? If there was ever going to be a strength of a team from Sam Pittman, it was always going to be about the offensive line, about trench play. And it just hasn't clicked yet. They should have dominated Kent State much more than just beating them 28 to 6. They should have been able to run on them at will. And KJ Jefferson had to get a lot more involved in the running game itself. I think he had 13 attempts for 48 yards when he was running the ball. But, you know, I didn't want to, you, didn't have, you shouldn't have had to have that. Jacoby Criswell should have played in this game, not because KJ Jefferson was bad, but just because it should have been such a onslaught that Criswell should have come in just to, to, to relieve uh, KJ. And even in the passing game, I know KJ finished 13 of 19, but he only had 136 yards and two touchdowns. And, you know, he didn't, at the very beginning of the game, he didn't look crisp. Like, nothing looked crisp about the offense in the beginning of the game, which was so strange because against uh, Western Carolina, the opening of the game, it, the offense looked as clean and as crisp as you'd ever see it. And for whatever reason, in this one, it's just like, Nothing. They scored. Arkansas scored a touchdown in every quarter. That's where the 28 points. Seven, 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 seven. Uh, touchdowns in each and every quarter. And, you know, again, they got the victory, but it just was not, it wasn't a game to where Arkansas won and I'm like, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. No, I felt great after Western Carolina. After this game, I'm like, okay. They got the win. That's great. But you, there's still a lot of things that this team has to work. A lot of things that they have to work. But the offense uh, not being very crisp was a concern, especially in the rushing attack. Arkansas only averaged 3.8 yards a year. Now, granted, uh, <laughs> Kent State averaged 0.7 yards a carry. So that was but yeah, that's not going to get it done. But still, like I like, and I'll get into what I like, what I liked also. Uh, I'm sure later. Actually, no, I can just go ahead and do it now because uh, Isaac Tesla is that dude. Like that guy is a freak. He was making catches that I was like, how in the world? He made two, at least uh, two of them, like, just were incredible catches. So I love that kid. He's really good. Andrew Armstrong was solid, too. Uh, Luke has. They got him a little bit more involved into the game. So there were, there were some things about it for that. But the offense is definitely something that needs to be uh, worked on when it gets to you know, running the ball. But on the flip side of that, I love what the defense has been doing and did in this game. I mean, you've got to understand probably how frustrating that has to be for a defensive unit who is doing everything that they can to slow down the other team. I mean, they kept them out of the end zone. They only scored six points. And they're constantly just doing and, and making plays and getting pick sixes. Like, they're doing all that they need to do, and then the offense comes out and goes three and out or, you know, goes four on fourth down and doesn't get it. You know, really frustrating things there. And then, uh, like, what the defense is, oh, geez, so we have to go back. So, that, that's not an easy thing for the defense to do, but they did it. And I really believe that at the end of the game, towards the end of the game, when Arkansas had that first, that was first and goal for Kent State at the two, I believe, and Arkansas kept them out of the end zone. They went for on fourth down and stuffed them. Great play by Landon Jackson. And th th it was just, that's exactly what you want to see from a, from a defense like Arkansas uh, to be able to really make it feel good. Arkansas had, in this game, I believe it was a list at four sacks. They really got after the, after the quarterback there. So I liked what the defensive line did. I liked what the linebackers did. Chris Pupal had a big hit there on that goal line stand, too. Secondary did a really good job. I mean, the defense did their job. They, I mean, look, if you think about it, in two games, Arkansas's defense has only allowed one touchdown. In two games. I don't care about the competition. I don't care about that because that, you got to play who you play. But considering where Arkansas was last year, considering what, what they were doing defensively last year, night and day different. One touchdown in two games. That's really good. And not to allow a single touchdown in this game is really good. So I get it. Not the greatest competition, but still uh, the defense is, is doing what they're supposed to be doing. They, they got their the job done, and that's all that matters in the end. So, win's a win, right? <laughs> Even if it's a, an ugly one, too. But we'll talk about some of the things that Arkansas needs to work on this week, specifically in getting ready for BYU. 
here in just a second. But first, I got to tell you about the Athletic Brewery. And we've talked about them before, but it's time now for your Game Changer of the Week, brought to you by Athletic Brewing Company. Much like in this particular case for Arkansas, much like Landon Jackson, you know, the great defensive lineman for Arkansas, Athletic Brewing has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually really, really taste good. And the reason being is because with Landon Jackson's play there at the end of the game, him getting in the backfield, he was able to beat his man not only off the block, but grab the running back with one arm, sling him in, and put him down the exact way that you want to see a defensive lineman come up with a big play and a big moment on a fourth down play. That's why Landon Jackson is an all-SEC player, and that's why everyone's so high on him too. So he definitely is my game changer of the week. Athletic Brewing Company has completely changed the non-alcoholic beer game. They make non-alcoholic beers that actually taste good with full flavor and well-crafted, just like a full-strength beer, and there's never a hangover with those. You can find Athletic Brewing Company's non-alcoholic brews at a store near you or buy online at athleticbrewing.com. First-time customers can use Locked On to get 15% off your first online order. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N at checkout for 15% off at athleticbrewing.com. Near beer, exclusions and conditions apply. Athletic Brewing Company, fit for all times. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks part podcast. Uh, part, yeah. uh, so, you know, Arkansas got the victory, as we talked about, and there are some things to be concerned about, no doubt about it. Like, we get it. I get it. And maybe I'm, somebody, I'm looking at it still optimistically, but I still believe that this is a team that can get some things. Done. And they can be a team that can, uh, that can really get after some, uh, some people and cause some problems. But they have BYU coming up. Now, BYU is also 2-0 uh, so far this year. BYU has been uh, beating teams, uh, Sam Houston, by 14 nothing. They beat Southern Utah 41-16. to So uh, they got big games against Arkansas not only this week, but the next week they go on the road to Kansas. You know, they're in the Big 12. Now. Isn't it weird that this is a Big 12 SEC matchup with BYU? I'm not going to get used to that, I don't think. But uh, Arkansas was able to take care of business against BYU pretty convincingly last year. I think it was like 52 points is what Arkansas was able to score on them. No, it was last year. But Arkansas really put it to BYU. And in that particular game, you saw the physicality and the speed of Arkansas's offense really take shape and take advantage of uh, BYU because even though they had a pretty good offense too, their defense just didn't have the athletes to keep up. So that's really where the game came down to it. And this year, uh, it's, it's crazy because uh, I think it's, it's a, I always forget, is it Keaton or Keaton? Get on Slovis. Remember him? He's the quarterback. He's the quarterback for BYU this year. You know, he last year he was at Pitt, and he reported that he was at USC, but now he's at BYU. So very highly experienced quarterback. He's already got 493 yards passing, four touchdowns, one interception, and has a completion percentage of 64.6 percent. Uh, so, you know, the passing has been pretty good for him. The rushing attack hasn't been great for him because they're only averaging 2.8 yards a carry. Sound familiar? <laughs> I feel like it's like Arkansas, too. So, like, they're, they're a team that's, of course, you know, can, can't take anything away from them. Uh, a good team that they ha- that Arkansas has to be ready for and has to improve on uh, what we saw this past week. But uh, this, is a, this is a team that's going to be an interesting matchup for, for many reasons because Arkansas has been really good, again, defensive, right? They've been able to stop the run pretty effectively. And they're not going to be perfect in the passing game, but they still – are exponentially better. This game is going to come down to Arkansas's offense. Plain and simple. Because I believe Arkansas's defense will take care of it. They'll do a good job. Now, does that mean they'll hold them to no touchdown? Probably not. But I still believe Arkansas's defense is skilled enough with the defensive linemen, with the linebackers, with the secondary to be able to hold BYU to, you know, less than 30 points. You know, like I could, I could see it being like 24 points, something to that extent. It's going to come down to Arkansas's offense. And, you know, with the, with the running game that we talked about, how much it's struggling, it's not like there's just a special formula that you can have practice. Like, okay, well, here's what we do. 
there it is. The running tank game's working again. It's as simple as that. It's more about being just the more physical team. Just getting guys off the block, pushing them around, moving the line. And once you do that, it, you wear a team down. It opens up a lot of lanes. And I just don't, like, Arkansas did a great job uh, on third down conversions against Kent State. In fact, I think that they ended up going 9-17, uh, or 9-13 uh, for on third downs. Which was great. And a lot, but a lot of those were such third down and longs. Like, you don't need to have them. You can't have them. And that's why the rushing attack is always so important no matter what is, you know, first down on, on running down, first down, or second down. You know, if you're getting stuffed, you don't ever want to be in where now it's third and eight or third and 11. Like you're putting yourself in a bad position. And honestly, as much as I love KJ running the ball, and it's great, and he's so good at it, I don't want him running it too much. I don't want him doing that. Good. We know we, you got to keep him healthy. You got to keep him upright as much as possible. So this is going to have to be a game. Like, is it a wake-up call? Like, is it going to be, okay, guys, we can't allow this to happen. We're not going to win many games this year if we cannot establish our rushing attack. It just, it's not going to happen. And also, it's not going to be a good thing if K.J. Jefferson ends up like leading the team in rushing this year. Like, I don't want that. No one wants that. So they got to be able to find creative ways to get the push, to get guys on the line of scrimmage, moving it around, and being effective. I know it's easier said. But they got to do it because, again, I think Arkansas's defense is going to do just fine against BYU. Their offense is good, but I think the defense is going to do just fine against them. But can Arkansas's offense be that more physical team? The defense will be more physical, but can they be more physical? That's going to be the ultimate thing. Can they do that? I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. But they're going to, yeah, they're going to have to do something better than what we've been watching. That, that is for sure. Folks. This episode is brought to you by Markel. From Fayetteville to El Dorado and everywhere in between, Markel has been helping Arkansas small business communities for over 30 years. Markel is a global specialty insurer with a truly people-first approach. To them, insurance is more than just a piece of paper. It's a promise to help you get people back on their feet. We spend a third of our lives working, so on-the-job injuries can be expected. You work hard to build your business, though, so it's important to make sure that you and your employees have the right insurance cover. Whether you're new to the business or celebrating your 25th year anniversary, whether you have one employee or a thousand employees, Markel aims to understand your workers' compensation insurance needs. Find a local independent agent, get a free workers' compensation insurance quote today at markelinsurance.com slash locked on. At M A R K E L insurance.com slash locked on. Markel, insuring America's small businesses since 1930. Insurance carrier coverage, dividends, and services availability may vary by state. Markel is a registered trademark of Markel Group, Incorporated. I also want to tell you folks about FanDuel. We know it is the NFL season officially underway, and they have incredible offers at FanDuel, America's number one sports. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so final segment here on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Um, Man. The SEC, the SEC, like this is a way, I guess maybe it's a, maybe it's a bad way of looking at it. But to me, I felt a little bit better about Arkansas's game after seeing the SEC struggle elsewhere, or just college football teams in general, good college football teams in general struggle because uh, like the big one was Alabama losing to Texas, is Texas back. I don't know. I do not know, but that was a huge win for Texas. 34 to 24, they won. They scored 21 points in the fourth quarter. Like, they just put it to them. Win yours is awesome. I mean, I hate to admit it because I hate Texas, um, but it, 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 they might be for real. 
They might be a team that's in the college football playoff this year. I think they're the best team in the Big 12 right now. And if you're going on the road and beating Bama by 10 points and taking their will in the fourth quarter, you're, you're legit. So, like, they lost. And then, you know, there wasn't really any other uh, games other than Miami putting it to at Texas A&M, which should make you maybe feel a little bit better as a Razorback fan when you go up against A&M. They look beatable. We'll see what happens. But you know, Miami, again, they may be a good team too. But getting beat 48-33, to 33, letting 48 points get scored on you, it's not, not exactly something that teams really you know, want to see. But, you know, you had that happen to them. Mississippi State needed overtime to beat Arizona. They won 34-24, 31-24. Auburn barely beat Cal on the road, 14-10. to 10. Needed a late touchdown in the fourth quarter to win that one. That was disgusting. And then you had uh, some other games, too. But, like, look at like, what Mississippi scored, though. So, Tennessee beat Austin P 30-13. to At halftime, it was 13-6. to you get Tennessee and Austin P. All right. LSU ended up smoking Grambling 72 to 10. Well, it's crazy. It was 14 to 10 at the end of the first. A little bit slow start there. Ole Miss beat Tulane, but Ole Miss needed a fourth quarter to beat them. It was 37 20, and they had to score 20 points in the fourth quarter to steal it. Kentucky beat Eastern Kentucky 28 to 17. Missouri beat Middle Tennessee State 23 to 19. Ugh. South Carolina beat Furman 47 to 21, but it was dicey there for in, in the beginning of that game. You know, that wasn't that wasn't a great show. But it's not even just like the SEC. Like let's let's look at some of the top 25 scores from the weekend. And just like look at some like Ohio State beat Youngstown State 35 step. Now, again, it's a, it's a bigger score, but it was a little bit of a slow start for them. You also had, what's the other one? Oh, yeah, Utah barely beat Baylor. In fact, they needed a comeback in the fourth quarter to beat Baylor. Baylor's not the team that lost to Texas State last week, and Utah's the one that put it to Florida. Oregon beat Texas Tech by eight points. So barely survived that one. North Carolina had to go to overtime against Appalachian State, 40-34. to Oklahoma beat SMU 28 to 11. Wisconsin wa- lost to Washington State 31 22. And now, I mean, that was pretty much it as far as the close games go. But my point is that, like, when I watched all those or saw these scores and saw these games, I'm like, you know what? Maybe it's just a little, you know, a little second week uh, fatigue or something, or a big letdown after the opening week for some people. Like, a lot of them did not look great. And Arkansas was one of those teams that didn't look great. But sometimes it happened. Maybe that was the case for Arkansas. But I still believe in Sam Pittman. I still believe in, I still like Dan Enos uh, as an offensive coordinator. I still like what he's bringing to the table, and especially in the passing game. By you know, it's, it's a work in progress. Like I even said this in the uh, beginning part of fall camp, or at least, no, I guess it was the end of fall camp. Uh, before the week of the game, I was like, there's a chance. I feel like the offense is going to take a little bit to get going. And, you know, maybe this is the case. Maybe it's going to take a little bit. To get going. Maybe BYU's when it's all clicks together. That'd be nice. But the point is, is that even though Arkansas struggled, even though they have some issues, even though it was a little frustrating, other teams were like that too. So it's not just an Arkansas deal. But the biggest thing, folks, the biggest thing is you're 2-0. and 2-0. and You're undefeated. A lot of teams would love to be 2-0 and right now. Trying to go with my inner Houston nut there. But still, folks, it'll be fine. There's a lot of stuff this team's got to work on, but you're 2 and up. So let's see what happens again. Appreciate everybody listening in to Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at Buzz John Neighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.